Hey guys, back in May of 2021, so like a year and a half ago, I put out a video on the Streamlight TLR7 sub. And Streamlight was one of the first companies to introduce a light for the P365 other than SIG. And the SIG one, the output was only 100 lumens, whereas the TLR7 was 500 lumens. So fast forward to November 2022, and SIG has now came out with a very similar light, but it has an integrated laser, a green laser built into it. And this one is specifically for the P365 and the P365XL. They also make a version for the Glock 43, the Glock 48, and the Springfield Hellcat. So I figured we'll do a quick unboxing here and then we'll go over some features and specifications of it. Comes in the normal Streamlight packaging. Um, looks like it's 500 lumens, hour and a half runtime. It does have strobe capability. And then we'll go over some of the other stuff here in a bit. All right, let's get it out of the package here. All right, so obviously we got the light and a battery. Just some literature and a sticker, manual, and some keys. What to figure out? Oh, this is a. The other switches are in here too, so you can have high or low switches. See those down in there. That little piece right there is important to be able to lock that to your rail. So here is the light and the battery. You can see this one says SIG on that there. Put this battery out. And this is a, a CR123A battery. There you go. So some real quick specs. The length of this is 2.51 inches. Uh, the overall width is 1.16 inches. And the height from up here down here is a 1.63 inches weight is 2.3 ounces without the battery 2.9 ounces with the battery so like I mentioned earlier it's 500 lumens uh, it's 5,000 candela it's got a TIR optic lens on it laser is a green laser uh, the spectrum on that is 510 to 530 nanometers. Obviously, it's got controls on both sides, so it's ambidextrous. And uh, I'll have to look through the manual here, but it looks like you might just push this pin out to change those switches. The ones I've had in the past, you would have to change this entire back piece to put on the other switches. But it looks to me, see how there's like a hole in those? Again, I'll confirm it here in a bit, but it looks like you can just Take that pin out and put the different switches on there. You can see how the rail mount is spring loaded. So you can mount this from underneath the gun and never get your hand in front of the muzzle. Um, and then this is that little piece that I showed earlier in the bag. See that little clip right there? I've actually lost those or it'll still tighten, uh, but it, you kind of lose some of the spring feature of it. So they give you, it look like two extras of those because they probably know that people do lose those. They're super hard to kind of hold on to if you ever have to take that off for a reason. And it has a waterproof rating of IPX4. So let's get a battery in it and see what the TLR8G is all about. Uh, this shows that the battery that the kind of the head goes in or the positive end goes in first. So we'll throw that in there. Pretty simple operation on it. If you want a constant on, just tap either side. It's going to be hard to pick up on the camera, uh, but can you see the green laser right there? And if you want a momentary on, uh, you just press and then release when you are ready for it to shut off. So you can have constant 
or momentary. So the light does have a strobe feature, but it does not ship with it enabled. Um, and it's like the 10 tap technology. So basically what you have to do is you press this nine times consecutively within a quarter second of, of each press. And then on the 10th time you hold down on it. So let's see if we can get this programmed. It's nine rapid presses and then hold on the 10th until it shuts off. All right, so just like that, I am programmed. And now to get to strobe, it's just a basically a quick double tap. And if you don't want strobe, you just do the exact same thing to turn it back off. All right, let's get this thing mounted to a P365. As you see, I'm working with the empty gun. So this should be as simple as just pressing in on this it snaps up over the rail and it's on like, just like that. And then we'll basically tighten this thing back down, but it's that simple. So I just used a quarter to tighten that down and that thing is rock solid on there. There's zero movement, left, right, front, back, nothing at all. It is solid. I didn't show it earlier, but to make adjustments for your laser uh, for windage elevation um, is all right here on this side of it. Um, and that little hex key that's in there is what you would use. So whenever I get to the range, if I'm, you know, high or low or left or right or whatever, I'll adjust it that way. All right, guys, out at the range here with the little stream light. Um, I brought the tool because I'm sure I'm going to have to adjust the laser here. Try to give you guys an idea of what that green laser looks like outside. It is bright and sunny today. I'm probably gonna have to zoom in so you can see it up there on the target. So let's get this thing. Okay. Again, I know the camera does not pick that up as clear as what you can see. It is super, super crisp and bright. That green is super easy to pick up. All right, here's the stream light inside the house. Room is 12 by 20. Camera doesn't pick up the uh, green laser, you know, real well, but the thing is super bright to the naked eye. Okay, about 35 feet away from this exterior wall. We'll see what the stream light looks like outside. Laser super bright. Uh, it's definitely more of a floodlight, uh, not so much a spotlight. It's got a hot spot, but it's kind of a, a wide one. And about 50 feet away from this corner. Again, it's kind of more of a wall of light. You can see the green dot over there. So some thoughts on the TLR-8G. Uh, first, there were not any issues whatsoever at the range. No flickering, no shutting off, um, no problems at all. There also was not any movement at all at the range today. Uh, this thing was very solid on there. Almost wish that I had paddle style controls instead of these here. This is such a small gun uh, my fingers almost come to the end of the slide here. And so when I come down, I'm not even close to the, to the switches here. Um, basically I have to bring my finger back almost off and then come back down to here. It's a, it's somewhat awkward for me to get to it. So that's obviously with my strong side. 
I almost would never do it this way because it's so uncomfortable to try to get to that switch. Um, I would definitely do it with my off hand or weak hand, but even that, my thumb is way up here and to try to get this, I have to bring it back in, but it's still easier than what it is to go with my strong hand. The other thing that by having the controls like this is that it does take up a little bit more real estate inside of that trigger guard area. And it's not a big trigger guard area as it is. Like, like there's not a whole lot of room in there. And especially if you had gloves, I don't know if you could actually get in there with, with those switches. Um, another thing I noticed is just in the 40 or 50 rounds that I shot today, you can't even read the letters on there anymore. There's so much carbon that builds up. And then also on the lens itself, it gets a ton of carbon on it. I think that the light, the 500 lumens is plenty bright enough for most indoor situations. And I think it's bright enough for most up close outdoor situations. Um, I do kind of wish though that you could Basically, have it to where if you wanted just the light, you could have it. If you wanted the light and the laser, you could have that. Or if you wanted just laser only, you could have that. Um, you could take like this one here. So if I want just the, the light, I could have this. If I want light and laser, I don't know if that's going to show up very well or not, but see the red laser right there. Um, or if I want laser only, I can switch it between that and this Olight here does the exact same thing. There's a little toggle switch that you could have light, light laser, or laser only. So I, I kind of do wish that Streamlight would have done something like that with it. I like that it takes, you know, just a pretty standard common, you know, CR123A battery. Um, I also like that you can just turn the head a little bit to put the light and lockout mode. I like how quick and easy it is to mount and how secure it is once it's mounted. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty impressive little light. I will leave a link uh, to Streamlight down in the video description. I'm actually not sure if they're even available for sale yet. Um, if they are, I'll try to find an Amazon link and leave that as well. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.